104.5, the team you're home for New York sports. And our friend Andy Serling joins us right now. Of course, you catch at the post also here on 104.5, the team. Naira Insider, Andy Serling. So, Andy, I, I had no West Coast anywhere on my tickets. How did he win the Travers? I picked him second. I mean, I'm not a genius, but I did have him in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, he won because he's the best horse and he got the best trip. I mean, it's a tough combination. I, I, I think the second finisher... Conavera arguably ran pretty close to as well as he did because he tried to circle the field, but it was a track that was probably a little kind inside runners. He was allowed to control in the front end. He's a good horse and a good trainer, um, just a good horse. And you know, it's, it's a three-year-old division that, you know, to be kind, has not exactly been uh, too consistent. We've seen different winners of every major race we basically run in the country this year. And West Coast, the one that's sort of coming along at the right time. Um, does he benefit from sort of not battling it out against the big boys earlier in the year? Very, very possibly. And he's going to have to do something else major this year to be the three-year-old champion. But he's a very deserving winner and a very talented horse. Now, you touched on it there at the end. He has to do more as a three-year-old to be a champion. What do you expect this horse to do next? What's Bob Baffert's plans? You know, I don't know. I mean, if he goes to the Pennsylvania Derby, which is now a grade one and a million dollars um, just three weeks from now and four weeks from the Travers, and he wins that, then he probably will be three-year-old champion. Otherwise, he's sort of putting his, ask his, ba- his eggs in the basket of the Breeders' Cup. And, I mean, he's not going to win the Classics in all likelihood. So, you know, maybe he thinks a second-place finish or something propels him. Or maybe, you know, Bob's sort of funny. He could be thinking a race like the Clark at the end of the year at Churchill Downs. So, you don't know. And, I mean... How much are they thinking about the three-year-old championship? Are they thinking about next year with the horse? I don't know. He's a good horse, though, and at this point, I mean, always dreaming and cloud computing and tap it. I mean, they got a lot more proving to do to show that their triple crown races were anything but flukes. If we busted out the Andy Serling power rankings, who, in your mind, is the best three-year-old in the country? Um, right now, it probably is West Coast off of that race, but... You know, you don't want to dismiss horses like Oscar Performance, who's coming off two grade one races, albeit on turf, but he's taking on elders in the Joe Hirsch at Belmont. And if he beats older horses in that race, I think given the disarray in this division, he has to be considered. How about a horse like Practical Joke, who won the Allen Jerkins this weekend at grade one and has run well all year and, and been competitive in every race he's been in? You know, what happens if he goes on and, you know, wins the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile or, I don't know, the Cigar Mile or who knows, you know, exactly how it works out? I think they're in there because these Triple Crown winners, unless, you know, one of them goes to Pennsylvania and has some convincing win, the winners Triple Crown race, they're, they're not likely to get the award, though. Maybe Always Dreaming will do it because of the, the power of the Derby. But it's hard not to say West Coast isn't the top horse right now. Now is Andy Sterling with us right now on 104.5, the team. Andy, like, is this a situation where, like, you know, we've kind of been spoiled by, like, having these great horses step up, like the Arrogates and, you know, and everything else? Where, or is there just so many good horses right now that, that you can't really pick the perfect horse until everything's said and done? I think there are some good horses around this country, whether or not they're the three-year-olds, is another debate. I'm not sure that this three-year-old crop looks worse than one last year, ex arrogate You know, when Arrogate came along, he laid waste to the, to, the, to the Travers field. I mean, he won the race by 14-plus lengths, and he sure showed the difference between a truly great talent and just sort of, you know, okay horses running in big races. I'm not sure that this group doesn't somewhat resemble that where they're okay on a given day, and they sometimes seem to run fairly well. Um, you know, just because they're more competitive doesn't mean they're better. Um, I don't think other than arrogate, I mean, you know, arrogate is sort of tailed off. Greatness to me is great. Great is a word that's badly misused. Um, maybe a great campaign, maybe a great performance here and there, but true greatness is probably arrogate is best, and, and the rest of them are good horses. So it's and- not a knock. They're just good horses. Andy, we're, uh, you know, there's... Limited time left for the Saratoga meet. What, what are you looking at on Saturday and this weekend? Well, I mean, it's a great weekend. We've still got the grade one spin away, the grade one hopeful on closing day, the grade one Woodward on Saturday, and Gunrunner is going to face off against a two-pronged challenge from Todd Fletcher, both uh, Neolithic as well as uh, Rally Cry. And I think both of them actually have a chance. So it's going to be a great – I mean, we've got 11 races Friday, 12 on Saturday and Sunday, and 11 on Monday. So that's 46 races in four days. <laughs> And, uh, you know, you go to Naira Bets, you sign up for Naira Bets, you bet all the races at the track, at home, wherever you are, use the Naira Now app, go to Naira.com, act like you're here, you should be here. You guys, I, I demand your participation the final four days. So, I mean, the meet's closing, but it's by no means over. There is plenty of good racing left, and 
people are really trying to win at Saratoga that last weekend, so you're going to see big fields galore. I mean, there's a ton of horses entered both Friday and Saturday, and we're drawing Sunday and Monday on, on, on Thursday. Every once in a while, Andy, one of those horses just completely jumps out at you, and then I take advantage of it and make it look like I was smart and knew it was going to win. Is there anybody on your on your card you're just looking at right now, or you or you still need more time? Well, I mean, I finished work on Saturdays at this point. You know, I'm you know as you know me, I'm always looking for sort of odd priced horses. I'll tell you, a horse in the fifth race Saturday, I think is interesting. The price, the two Berks County. I mean, Chad Brown has two in there, fantastic, and let's get loud, and they're the two horses to beat. But Berks County has a chance to price to sort of get in there. Uh, I'm trying to sort of find some price horses that have chances. Uh, you know, I think that, that, that there's a, the, 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 the Saranac, the ninth race on Saturday, Mr. Haverkamp is a horse coming in from Woodbine. It might be kind of a sneaky horse to upset some of the horses like uh, Yoshida and Bricks and Moore. It'll take the majority to play in there. And I actually think Neolithic has a chance to be Gunrunner, so I give him a slight chance for an upset. The final edition of At the Post on 104.5, the team, what can we expect? Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun, actually. Um, Jerry Bailey and Randy Moss, who um, sort of headline the NBC shows, they're going to be on together. It's sort of our, our main guest, but uh, Todd Shrupp from TVG, who's, who's an entertaining guy, is going to start the night off. Jeremiah Inglehart, the trainer, has had a terrific meetup here. He's going to join me as well as uh, Tony Alvado works with me. And, you know, work at TVG, and we can, we can sort of make fun of each other to close the, the night out for a few <laughs> minutes at the end of the night. So it's going to be a really fun night, and it's been a terrific year, and we, we appreciate your participation as well. Andy Serling with us from Naira. Now, of course, uh, we, we will still be picking your brain as New York racing never ends, but um, just want to take this second since it's the last time you're on the air with us before the end of the Saratoga meet to thank you for all your help and all the great uh, content you've given us. Oh, well, thanks. I appreciate that, and I love working with you guys. And like I said, I appreciate your support without the Post Live. And it's, you know, it's been another great summer here in Saratoga. Fortunately, the weather cooperated, which is always the biggest factor, but uh, it's, been, it's been great up here, and everybody's great up here. It's such a wonderful place to be. Andy Serling, everybody. Andy, thank you. We appreciate you. Thanks a lot.